This is Smash Ultimate's final roster. Ten years ago, Smash for the 3DS and Wii U marked something noteworthy. It's the last time that any playable characters would get completely cut from the game. But it seems like that's gonna change. Smash Ultimate brought everyone back, but with series director Masahiro Sakurai all but confirming it's not feasible to ever accomplish this feat again, the question is no longer will there be cuts for the next Smash game, it's how many? It got me wondering, which characters are 100% locks to get brought back? Before Smash 6's Doomsday Thanos Snap scenario, I analyzed every single cut character from these older Smash games, and it's given us signs that there's four main levels of cuts to expect for Smash 6. Outside of the characters who, let's be honest, are pretty obvious to go, I'm sorry. We've done a deep dive on these, but in summary are <clears throat> Clone Not Relevant, Clone Not Relevant, Gonna Get Completely Replaced, Clone Not Relevant, Clone As Much As It Pains Me To Say It, Not Relevant, Clone not relevant, clone not really needed anymore, definitely not needed anymore, a fun, lovable joke character, but one whose time has passed. <sighs> Why is this so painful? Outside of these, there's still some that are relatively realistic to go, those who seem to have a 50-50 shot of whether they stay or whether they don't, and those who I like to classify as the danger zone for Smash characters. You think they got no chance to get cut, you think they're safe to stay, but some have made a surprisingly strong argument for them to go. We gotta cover those. First, there's seven characters who I feel meet that realistic criteria. The first of which, a representative of her own series, is Min Min. ARMS was treated as a big deal releasing in 2017 for the Switch. It really seemed like Nintendo thought this was going to be their next Splatoon, their big new IP for the console. This time, instead of filling the void of a third-person shooter that we've never had in Nintendo history, we now have giant long arm fights, and yeah, while well, it didn't sell well at all, it's still a new Nintendo IP, we want to give it a chance, we want to give it that Smash Brothers promotional boost. Okay, so who are we going to put in the roster? Is it the mascot of the series? I guess there's really two options there. Okay, but we're not choosing Spring Man, we're putting him in as an assist trophy. Uh, oh, uh, but we're not taking Ribbon Girl either. Oh, huh. Min Min. Min Min seemed like a really oddball choice, there was a lot of controversy around it at the time, and man, after seeing her playstyle, I don't really think there's a whole lot of people that are going to be clamoring for her to come back necessarily. What keeps her out of the bottom tier for me, however, is the fact that she's the sole representative of her series, and it's a Nintendo property. If we look throughout the characters that have been cut in Smash history, there's really no instances of a character who is their sole series representative getting the axe. Well, none, except for the Ice Climbers. If you look through history, however, the Ice Climbers were only cut from Smash 4 due to hardware limitations. They just couldn't fit 8 Ice Climbers on the tiny Nintendo 3DS screen. They didn't want to cut the Ice Climbers. I feel more comfortable cutting Wii Fit in this case, since its replacement is going to be essentially Nintendo's replacement of the Wii Fit series itself. However, what's really replacing ARMS, right? Still though, I really don't think there's much demand for Min Min to come back. I doubt ARMS is going to get a sequel considering how it's sold and how everything else on the Switch is completely ballooned in sales. A new IP is probably going to take this spot. And oh hey, did you think we're finished with the Fire Emblem cuts? Haha, <laughs> no, it's Krom. A lot of people tend to wrap Lucina and Krom in the same boat. But I disagree. The argument for Lucina is simple. She got in first. Krom only got into the game as an aid to Robin in their final Smash. But looking back at 2014 interviews, Sakurai seemed to really want to include this guy in the roster, and said if they had more time, he would have been one of the characters that they added, absolutely. To get another representative for Awakening in there, it was much easier to reskin Marth, whereas for Ultimate, they had to make some more alterations. Krom is based on Roy, but he has moves based on Ike, like his up special, for example. A little bit more went into this, there's some more originality. Krom is the more popular character between the two as well. If Smash 6 is going to be providing a lot more changes to characters, Krom could be one who gets his moveset a little bit spiced up. On the other hand though, we already have a more unique Fire Emblem Awakening character represented, who is essentially the other protagonist of the game. Do we really need to keep this one? My answer is no. Oh, and hey, look who's beside him. Yeah, this one might piss some people off. Roy is a fan favorite character, and the one that Krom is based on. Cutting both of them would essentially be eliminating an entire moveset from the roster. The moveset is cool, yes, but it's a moveset that's been cut from the series before. Outright replaced in Super Smash Bros. Brawl with Ike, and there wasn't too much uproar at the time. Halle even was still left out of the base roster in Smash 4, only being brought back as DLC. 
a cool little cameo, but why is he more likely to come back now than he was back then? There's more popular Fire Emblem competition now than there was back then. It's the same situation as Mario. If we bring back all these Fire Emblem characters from the past and inevitably have to add new ones like Aaliyah or whoever the most recent protagonist is at the time, the roster's gonna be bloated and we're not going to have 117 characters in this game. No. Someone else who got brought back like Roy was Lucas, in pretty much the exact same way. Being revealed on April Fools, of all days, Mother 3's protagonist made his return in Smash 4's DLC, meaning he's technically never been cut since his introduction in Brawl, which I feel gives him a little bit more leeway above the rest of the cast. Mother 3's gotten ported onto Japan's Nintendo Switch eShop as well, meaning Nintendo still recognizes the demand for this title. This port, however, never reached overseas. I love Lucas, he's a cult Nintendo icon at this point, but purely for the fact that his game is censored and cannot be released over here. I'm not really sure that that's the thing that Nintendo wants to promote above everything else in their premier fighting franchise. When they have the opportunity to throw in, I don't know, Meow Scarada. Oh, and while I had to mention Pokemon, here comes Incineroar. This big furry cat- Sorry, fiery cat Pokemon joined the roster as the Generation 7 representative, the most recent during the time of Ultimate's development. This was the first time that the pick wasn't necessarily clear-cut. The mascot of Generation 6 was Greninja, the mascot of Generation 4 was Lucario. Who's the mascot of Generation 7? Many thought it would be Decidueye. The Pokemon of the Year polling that happened years after this revealed Mimikyu was the most popular Gen 7 Pokemon. Well, it could have been Mimikyu. Well, we already have a couple other Pikachu clones in the game, do we really need Mimikyu in there? Let's just put Incineroar, he's another starter. And this provided a unique moveset, sort of a wrestler Pokemon being introduced in the roster, but uh, is this the most likely character to stay in the future, however? I'm not really sure. Incineroar is still relevant in the competitive scene of the community, although not for the greatest reasons, and I wouldn't necessarily consider it beloved and a cult icon like some of the other Pokemon on the roster. Like Pichu, I could see this guy going to the wayside. The only thing he has going in his favor is his moveset. Palutena is an interesting one, with again, the only real reason that she's even in this game in the first place being this guy. But you know what, she serves as a good representative for Kid Icarus, I find she has a unique moveset being more of a spacer type character, has a cool gimmick with her stage and whatnot, but you know what, that gimmick could be done without a full on playable roster spot in this game, and if we have to add a couple more characters that are realistic to be cut, man she's next up on my list. If Nintendo's not going to revive Kid Icarus, it can get the treatment like many other franchises have where it gets one character to represent everything. If it's good enough for Punch-Out, Arms, freaking Splatoon, it's good enough for Kid Icarus. The final character out of this bunch was a little bit difficult for me, but I narrowed in on Zero Suit Samus. In Smash 64 and Melee, we obviously had Samus, but in Brawl, things were taken up a notch. Fans have been asking Ridley for years for a boss rep from this series to finally join the roster, and haha, <laughs> what do we give him? Oh yeah, it's another version of Samus. And no, not a clone, literally the exact same character. It's kind of cool to see Samus without the suit, it's a unique scenario, but does it really need its own fighter slot in Smash? The moveset's okay, but it still is kind of basic. Zero Suit could be included as a cutscene in the final Smash, I think that's about to the extent that I think we need for this character. The only thing really going for Zero Suit's favor in my opinion is that she's never been cut from the series yet. And while when she was introduced in Brawl you had to jump over a few hurdles to access her on the character select screen, in Smash 4 she got her entirely own spot. Again, another entry in Smash that didn't have any other Metroid characters, and the only entry after that is the one that focused on bringing everyone back, so there was really no opportunity to cut her without any fans being upset, but I believe it's there now. And now we're approaching an interesting section of the video. The 50-50 range. The 22 to 28% of cuts is a very important number, because it keeps the roster size at Smash Ultimate's current level. If we're around 24 cuts, and a similar 24 number replacing the number of cuts, to the hyper-casual player that isn't concerned about the meticulous roster improvements and the other features the game has to offer, and just wants to look at the number of characters on the box, we're not going to appear as less than Smash Ultimate. Tiptoeing a little bit further crosses that dangerous line. So who's eligible for this range? Well, as the number implies, I'd like to list some characters who I believe are closer to the range of 50-50, and we can decide from there which 8 of these characters are the most likely to join the 16 in the cut character realm.
Many may initially have thrown Toon Link into the same bucket as Young Link, and there's an argument for it. You could say Young Link represents a similar amount of games in the series that Toon Link does. However, Toon Link's style is more distinctive. This represents a completely different artistic direction for Zelda, and opens the door for more unique looking home stages than that of Young Link. Even disregarding this, Toon Link was Young Link's more modern replacement, and there's been no signs of cutting the character any time since. In addition, Link got updates to his moveset to accommodate for Breath of the Wild being a more modern Zelda title. If we want to maintain the heritage of the series and keep some of these older mechanics, we're going to have to keep one of these Links in the roster with a similar moveset two years of old. And if we establish that Young Link is very likely to go, I think it really increases Toon Link's odds of keeping that spot. Why is Toon Link around the 50-50 range? Well, for the very reason that he could be the one who has his spot taken away, and Young Link keeps that spot. While I don't think that chance is very likely, it's a possible one and something that needs to be considered. It's also possible that they straight up yeet both Links out of the roster completely. If we're approaching that Smash 6 reboot territory in a similar way to how we don't need more than one Mario and more than one Samus, why do we need more than one Link? In that same vein, why do we need more than one Zelda? Sheik actually does have a unique moveset, and has been around in the series for a long time, longer than Toon Link. Debuting in Melee as a combination character with Zelda, and eventually being moved into her own spot in Smash 4, Sheik was revealed at the end of Ocarina of Time to be Zelda in disguise, and that is pretty much the extent of Sheik's contribution to the Zelda series. Impa could almost just be slapped onto Sheik's moveset at this point and serve as a more iconic character for the Zelda series. Nintendo just seems to be hesitant to pull the trigger on it. However, in the case where we need to cut many characters from the roster, I don't think they're going to hold back too much. Sheik does have that aura about her though, gotta respect that, oh, speaking of aura. Lucario is a Pokemon who, man, just fallen off, man. The humanoid-esque icon of the series, until really Greninja came around supplanting it, is probably the most popular Pokemon right now with the core fanbase. And I think it's because of that and his moveset similarities to another character who I think is more likely to stick around, hint hint, that he might not be needed anymore. He's still pretty popular, I'm not putting him below the 50-50 section, but he's definitely not a lock to come back. The aura might not save him this time, but he's not the only Pokemon I feel is on the chopping block. Oh my, I'm imagining the comments right now. Syroth, you can't cut Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff is part of the original 12. The Sacred Ones introduced all the way back in Smash Bros. 64, these are the characters who cannot be cut from the series under any circumstance is probably the biggest load of crap I've ever heard from the Smash fanbase, and I've heard a lot. I've heard spirits can't be fighters, I've heard third party series can't get multiple reps, I've heard assist trophies can never become fighters. It seems like just about every artificial rule come up with by the Smash fanbase has been broken at one point or another. And this fabled original 12 rule was almost broken multiple times. Lucas was supposed to replace Ness in Melee. Again, Ness, a member of the original 12, oh, it wasn't a successful attempt because of development issues with Mother 3. Okay, well then what's this? Jigglypuff was planned to be cut for the release of Super Smash Bros. Melee, but Sakurai included her because he was afraid fans would be upset? Oh, what's this? Super Smash Bros. Brawl? Jigglypuff planned to have been cut again? It was only because when Sakurai got the 411 that they were able to include Sonic in the game and Brawl had to be explicitly delayed for this that they were able to include some other characters in the meantime. This is how Jigglypuff got her spot in Brawl. She was not a priority to get into this game at all. If we're talking about characters who have a chance to be getting cut, Puff has to be in the conversation, and I feel some people are hanging on so desperately to this fabled original 12 rule that we're not having this critically important life conversation. <laughs> okay. I considered putting Jigglypuff in a lower section than this, but I do have to give some benefit of the doubt here. In all fairness, Jigglypuff didn't need to be brought back in Smash 4 if this was the case. Puff's been on the decline in popularity year over year throughout history, and if there was a time to cut her, Smash 4 was a pretty opportune time. The only real relevance Puff has got since then was gaining the Fairy type in Pokemon X and Y, a year before Smash 4 released, so that is something. After this, Puff gets brought back for Smash Ultimate, which would have happened regardless of whether she was relevant or not. And after this, Puff gets a Paradox form in Scarlet and Violet with Screamtail. Things seem to be going a little bit better for Puff recently. But at the same time, there are many other Pokemon that are not in Smash that got Paradox Pokemon based on them. 
Puff is not unique in this regard, although it doesn't hurt her chances. Putting her any higher than the 50-50 range though, I'm not too sure about that one. Our next character you could hear coming from a mile away. Yeah, literally. Daisy would have been an echo that I personally never would have really expected, had she not been revealed on the exact same day that Echo Fighters were announced, that is. Daisy had kind of settled into a spin-off role in the Mario series at that time, not being on the forefront of too much ever since Super Mario Land, which had happened decades prior. But now all of a sudden there seemed to be a renewed popularity, a renewed interest in the character. Daisy has been getting more prominent roles in the series recently, being in Mario Wonder as a playable character, first time she's ever been playable in a mainline game in series history. This does look good for her coming back in Smash. But on the other side of the 50-50, she is an Echo, an Echo of a character who could be getting heavily modified in the Smash game because Princess Peach Showtime is given a lot more unique moveset possibilities for this character who is, again, like many, never received many changes since her introduction in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Peach's two solo games only happened after this entry. She's capable of a lot more than she's doing in Smash right now. We either gotta bank on Daisy being a big enough of a series priority like Rosalina was back in 2014 to be getting this big push in the new Smash game, getting a complete moveset overhaul, or she has to be an echo of an unmodified Princess Peach. If that's the case, would there really be as much demand for her to come back as there would be for a completely original Mario character? Maybe the chance for a dry Bowser to get an echo slot? Oh hey, did I mention Rosalina? Nintendo accomplished their goal by putting Rosalina in Smash. She's pretty much a main Mario character right now. Or, at least she was around that time. Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 featured her, she got into Mario Kart Wii, she was given a playable role in Mario 3D World, years before Daisy would get her role, even though she had been around in the series for much longer, Rosalina got into pretty much everything. Until nowadays, where the roles seem to kind of be reversed. Daisy getting into Mario Wonder, but Rosalina didn't. Okay, she doesn't have to be involved in every mainline Mario adventure, and she still is involved in the spin-off titles, but there's a lot of Mario characters involved in spin-off titles. Do I need to mention one again who has been trying for much, much longer to get into Smash? Rosalina has a unique gimmick, using the Luma in Smash Brothers. But aside from that, does the moveset really blow you away compared to many other characters? What real potential is there to improve on this, to take her a step above? I'm not so sure. Our next character is facing kind of the opposite situation. One with a very unique moveset, but one who also doesn't necessarily scream that he has to stay in Smash. I'm talking about Bowser Jr. Like many of the other Mario characters I've mentioned, he could be cut simply to replace him with another new Mario character for the series. He's an icon, but an icon that could be included in other ways. He could be an assist trophy, he and the Koopalings could be hazards on a stage helping out Bowser. I don't think his legacy would be hurt so much by being cut from a single entry in the Super Smash Bros. series. If Dr. Eggman got included as another Sonic representative, a character who I've seen is very highly requested and in my opinion very likely, his moveset would probably be a similar concept flying around, dropping all sorts of weapons, and causing havoc. If we're making way for the new and out with the old, why can't Junior take a back seat to allow Eggman's moveset to shine and serve a more unique purpose? Junior's still a very iconic character. I don't know how likely he is to go, and I certainly wouldn't be comfortable putting him in a lower category, but a higher one, I don't think he's that same. And the same goes for our next duo of characters, Pyro and Mithra. Their movesets are cool and everything, but their main gimmick is the swapping between character and character. A gimmick that had already been done almost two decades ago. It's unique now because they got rid of it, but another set of characters could be just as impressive if they get rid of this duo and add that gimmick for them again. For as cool as it is, the gimmick is replaceable, and there's many other candidates that can do it. If we need to have 24 character slots cut, are we not going to cut anyone from the Xenoblade series and give it a third representative? What, how many more reps is Splatoon going to get? One? Does Xenoblade deserve more than that? By the time Smash 6 releases, and there being many more new Xenoblade characters since then, do we really need to promote Pyra and Mithra? Do we need to promote Xenoblade Chronicles 2? Shulk's gimmick is unique. He sort of assumed himself as the mascot of the franchise, kind of taking the role of the Marth of Xenoblade. If one's gonna get cut, they 
duo of Pyra and Methra, I think, are much more likely. And looking at this at scale, that would take us to 8 character slots in the 50-50 section. But if you notice, we're kind of missing something here. Where are all the third-party characters? And this is where it gets interesting. Third parties are difficult to rank, because we obviously need to make sure that their rights are in place and they want the renewal for them to come back. The interest has to be mutual as well. Did Nintendo see benefit and great fan reception to the inclusion of this third party character, as opposed to promoting a brand new Nintendo IP? What's more valuable? I'd say the two most likely third party characters to get cut would be both Richter and Ken. The obvious picks, they're Echo Fighters. But there are many other third parties that you can make a case for cutting. Snake's the only third party character that's actually been cut before. It's not just an issue of age rating and Snake being more mature, it's because Nintendo and Konami couldn't figure out the renewal of the deal. It was only more recently that that partnership got back together, and that's why other Konami characters like Simon and Richter got included as well. I would say Snake's above that 50-50 range, but if the deals between the companies don't necessarily go through, then he'd be far below that. He may be closer to zero for all we know. Sephiroth is not necessarily a shoo-in either, even if the deal works out. How much value to Nintendo was provided by adding a Square Enix villain to the roster? That takes us up to four Square Enix representatives, what if we want to add someone else? Are we really going to take it up to five? Supplanting many of our established Nintendo properties in character number? How much of an impact did Kazuya make? Terry? Banjo even? Banjo was one of the few third party characters in the roster that is solely a legacy pick and just not being used at all not gaining anything from this Smash Brothers appearance. It's a retro appearance with a means to an end. And speaking of that, I'd like to mention one other group of characters before we cross this dreaded line. What's up with Nintendo's retro characters? Rob, Game & Watch, and Duck Hunt are a trilogy of characters that get paired together, and for good reason. They're an amiibo collection! No, seriously, they all represent aspects of Nintendo's past, Game & Watch representing Nintendo's first console, the many, many classic characters and games that have appeared on it being buried through the sands of time. People tend to focus more on the incident that got patched out. These games are critical to Nintendo history, and so was Rob. Rob saved Nintendo through the video game crash of 1983, a piece of history so vitally important to be remembered as generations go on. That is living through Smash. Duck Hunt got packaged with Super Mario Bros., the game that sent Nintendo on the map with the NES. Duck Hunt may have ended up like countless other NES games both before and after it, ones that never got the fortunate position of being packaged alongside one of Nintendo's greatest games of all time. But it's like Wii Sports. Duck Hunt may not have been the straw that stirred the drink, but it was there. He certainly didn't hurt things, a lot of people got to play and find out who he was through this, the NES Zapper is an iconic piece of Nintendo history, he deserves to be remembered. All three of these characters got into Smash and never got cut, but are we entirely sure that they're all going to make it in next time? Characters like Little Mac have proven you could come in, be an important part of Nintendo history, and still be an assist trophy, until so he finally stepped up to become playable. Does Little Mac go back to being that same assist trophy state as before? The Ice Climbers are retro Nintendo characters as well. Nowhere near as iconic as the other ones, especially not the former three, but say what you want. They're a unique character concept, a tag team duo, and a character that's recognizable now kept alive by Smash. The reason I'm grouping all of these characters together is they're not presently relevant. They haven't been in a game, haven't been featured on a console, haven't been a console, in several years. Decades even. To say they're all super likely to get back in, I feel is naive. It's like the lottery paradox. If I was to ask you about just Game & Watch specifically, oh well he was in Melee, he came back in Brawl, he came back in Smash 4, he's never been cut from the roster, well of course he's gonna get brought back for the next game. And you could probably say that about every single one of these guys, but if I was a betting man, I would say not all of them are going to get in. At least one or two are going to get the axe. A mix of these retros, these lesser and not quote-unquote untouchable third-party characters, in tandem with the eight chosen 50-50 reps, generally give us a good scope of who is and who isn't in the realm of possibility of getting cut for Super Smash Bros. 6. But, let's say if we did decide to cross that forbidden line into the danger zone. Taking us past this line is critical, 
We are now in series reboot territory, committing to Smash 6 having less playable characters than there were in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Some may view this as completely unrealistic, oh well, we can't go backwards, but let's think about it. Pokemon had to make the tough decision in 2019 to recognize that even if not right now, we will eventually approach the point where it's not possible to code every single Pokemon into the game, especially when they're not being used prominently. It makes no sense. And I dare to say the boycott didn't negatively affect its sales too much. Let's look at Mario Kart. With all the additions, Booster Course Pass DLC, all this content, it's just not going to be possible to top this with a new entry. We're going to have to sacrifice the amount of content for the quality of it with gimmick overhauls that are going to differentiate the game at its core to the one before. You want all that? You want all the characters, the courses, the content? Get Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, mostly every other Switch owner has. But for something entirely new, at the core of its gameplay, that's what Mario Kart 9 is for. That's what the new entry of the series is all about. Super Mario Maker 2, hell, even new Super Mario Bros. U and Luigi U in that combo pack, those games have way more levels in quantity than Mario Wonder, but Wonder has an entirely different gameplay gimmick. I don't think anyone's complaining that it has less levels than those previous games. Most people probably don't even think about that. Ted Talk aside, if Smash 6 comes in with slightly less characters, but we remake the outdated versions of the cast, if everyone got that hero treatment, that Steve treatment, maybe something even bigger than that, to me, it really has the potential to change the game up for the better. Changing the movesets of Mario, Donkey Kong, Sonic, but it'll likely come with a cost. The cost of cutting some characters we'd previously never even think about. I didn't include certain third-party characters in our sections here because I believe Nintendo would do anything humanly possible to keep Sora, Cloud, Minecraft, Steve, Pac-Man, the list goes on of characters that they could include in here. I actually feel Pac-Man is almost a shoe in because Bandai Namco is often involved in the development of these games. The other characters, however, I could see a reason why you would make an argument. Dark Samus is an Echo Fighter. How are you not going to include her at least in the 50-50 section? Well, I'll agree with you on one thing. Dark Samus is not going to be coming back into Smash 6. As an Echo Fighter, that is. Metroid's been getting a renewed push right now. I think you might have noticed that. And Dark Samus is playing a big role in this, an iconic character from this franchise with untapped moveset potential that really hasn't scratched the surface of what could be. In essence, taking advantage of the distraction that the massive reveal, no pun intended, of Ridley provided, that fans would still be happy to see Dark Samus in the game, kind of forgetting that, uh, yeah, if you've played these games, she really could just have a completely different moveset to Samus, she doesn't have to be the exact same thing. In Smash 6, I think we're gonna foresee this, especially if Zero Suit Samus gets cut, which I foresee happening. I think Ridley's a good case of ask and you shall receive. We've gotten to find out what this big monster's like in Smash Brothers, and to some, he was probably better off as a stage boss. But at this point, I think out of spite, Sakurai is saying there's ain't no way we're going back. Mewtwo is also a character who I think could be argued to be cut by some. However, like Ridley, after the insane fan demand to bring him back, I don't see him going again anytime soon. He provides a boss character in essence, a natural villain to the almost untouchable Pokemon trainer and definitely Pikachu of the Pokemon franchise. Besides, has Nintendo ever really tried to shy away from too much Gen 1 representation? Some may believe that Falco is going to get cut from this roster, they've had the opportunity to do it before, and they decided to cut Wolf instead, keeping him in, despite Star Fox still not being relevant at the time of Smash 4. His whole gimmick is that you think he's not in the game because he's not on the starting roster screen, and you unlock him immediately. I think it's pretty cool. Robin could get cut in the off chance that Krom stays, but he's way more unique. He's gonna stay. In a video I made where I replaced one character from every Smash series with someone else, I decided to cut Diddy from the roster and actually keep King K. Rool. In terms of not my personal opinion and what I would believe is the most likely scenario to occur though, I think King K. Rool is the more likely one to go. P.S. he's still not going though. There's a difference between a character like Piranha Plant who's added as a villain as a one-off joke and a character that fans have fought for for years to get into the roster, and K. Rool is the latter. Yes, he could technically serve as a stage boss like Ridley, however he never did before that, so there's no indicator as to why he would in the future after he's already been playable in the roster. He has a unique moveset too, this guy's not going anywhere. Shulk, I already touched on him, I guess they could keep Pyra and Mithra and get rid of him, but man, he's pretty much the mascot of the Xenoblade series at this point. 
Meta Knight would get cut if it was any other franchise, but he's Sakurai's baby and he's been around in Smash for a while. He's synonymous with the series after being insanely overpowered in Brawl. There's a history that's baked in there, very similar to Falco. And the last two in here I put are both the Mii Sword Fighter and the Gunner. Some of you may have been surprised to not see the Mii's at all yet in this video, and I have one answer as to why they're gonna stay pretty much no matter what. Money! Literal merchandise sellers integrated into the game. You can customize your avatar to be basically whatever you want with whatever moveset you want for 75 cents, that is. I don't see any of the Miis really getting cut purely because of this reason. However, there are some scenarios where the Miis do go. If they want to take these new avatars from Switch Sports or whatever it is and integrate those instead, I guess you could do that, but man, I don't even know what these guys are called. People know the Miis, people off the street know the Miis, they're more popular than 90% of this roster. There is that scenario, there's also the scenario where they consolidate pretty much all the abilities of the three Mii fighters into one fighter slot, that's why I kept the brawler, I feel it's the most versatile, not every character has a sword, not every character has a gun necessarily, but most characters have the two fists and can fight, and you can lift up those sword and gun weapons by using items in Smash Brothers as well. A slight, slight chance these two get cut, but I don't see that happening. Really, any of these characters in this tier, I think, are far more likely than not to make it into Super Smash Bros. 6. That's all for this one, folks. Uh, well, oh, you, you want to know who's safe? Well, thing is, that answer is a little complicated. We've been through the likely characters to cut, the ones who are somewhat realistic to get cut, the ones who are 50-50, the ones who maybe have a chance but probably aren't going to happen, but we have not reached probably the most interesting of all. Before we get to those characters at that comfortable triple digit mark, that 100% chance to come back in Smash 6, we do have to account for that 99%. You guys, it's lightning round conspiracy time. If the Miis are staying in the game, or we're getting other customizable avatars, does the villager character still need to be in Smash 6? Spoiler alert, but Isabelle is going to be a character that I consider to be a lock. She's the face of the Animal Crossing franchise. The customizable avatar is very iconic, but Isabelle is the marketable character you could sell more toys of. Would it be better to just put a more recognizable specific villager in the game, rather than having the villager character himself, when we already have other regular avatars you can customize anyway? Why wouldn't you put the villager outfit on your me character instead of having a full-on fighter slot? Squirtle and Ivysaur have been cut before. When I was younger, I always found it kind of weird that there was a Pokemon trainer specifically, but all these other Pokemon could fight for themselves in the game. That was just me though. I thought they rectified that in Smash 4 by cutting both Squirtle and Ivysaur, only to find out that that was completely due to hardware limitations, and my 5 year old self was just confused and didn't understand how wild Pokemon existed and could fight for themselves. Still though, I don't think it's very easy to be putting two characters that have already been cut as 100% locks to make it into Smash 6. Pit is another character who I think is similar to those retro guys, but he already had three characters. I don't think they're cutting all three of them in Smash 6. Diddy Kong I'm putting on here because they've been more hesitant to put him in Mario spinoffs recently, and I'm not really sure why. It took these guys forever to put him in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Why is that? Did we just want to save him for that big grand reveal? Whew, you got us, Nintendo. Almost 10 years into the game's life, Greninja won the Pokemon of the Year poll amongst the Pokemon fan base. that is, it's the most popular Mon that exists, this guy's not getting cut. Byleth and Ike I kinda packaged together, Byleth I feel best represents the Fire Emblem series as a whole in Smash, actually integrating the weapon triangle, whereas Ike is just an insanely popular character from the series that it really doesn't make sense to cut. Ness and Captain Falcon, man if these guys get cut, we're never gonna hear the end of it, and they know it at this point. So who's going to be in Smash 6 pretty much 100%? These guys. And well, if all the companies cooperate that are supposed to cooperate, these guys. Yeah, even you. The winner of the most highly requested character out of every single one that exists to get into Smash Brothers. What a world we live in. I'm sure this list has caused some controversy, but it's by no means the biggest controversy in Smash history. Not even in Smash YouTube history. This video I dig into Smash history, going through the biggest controversies in every game in the Smash Brothers series. Some of the incidents in here, well, they're pretty crazy. 